Good morning from a sunny Sunday in Barcelona. I had, literally about two hours ago, a tip-off from a local of Barcelona called Nicholas, and he said, Freddy, every Sunday in the hills outside Barcelona, there's an old vintage market called Mercantic, and it's meant to have the biggest selection of vintage books anywhere in Spain. So you're meant to go there, you grab a vermouth, you have a coffee, and you marvel at one of the finest vintage book selections anywhere in Spain, as well as a whole load of other antique stalls and stalls and everything like that. So, I mean, it just sounds brilliant. With a view of Barcelona, the sun's out, the forecast is 100% rain for tomorrow. So what a perfect way to spend our last proper, well, the penultimate day here in Barcelona. I think it's perfect. Too good an opportunity to miss out on. And the fact that it starts pretty much right now, can't miss out on it. I was semi-expecting winding roads leading up into the mountains with a panoramic view of Barcelona, but that's not the case. This is very much a town outside of Barcelona, but I mean, just judging by the sign, the bustle around the place, you, know, you can see it's, it's actually spreading out onto the streets, so I can't wait to have a look. Just parked by a 750 Harley, and I haven't seen many of these, it's actually a slightly better looking bag than I sometimes give it credit for. Quite like that. Okay, let's go and have a look. You know, I always dream coming to places like this and finding some James Bond first edition. <laughs> However, these people selling here are experts. There aren't going to be a proper, you know, it's not going to be a first edition James Bond that someone hasn't realised is valuable. Although, I just realised, we haven't flown this time, we're in the car. Mm -hmm. So if there's something that's interesting, okay. you know, we can actually fit it, potentially. A little different than all the rest A quite old-fashioned wear a hat, sometimes play chess is crazy and brilliant. It's not something I would ever have considered coming to unless I got a tip off. 
It starts at 10 a.m. every Sunday, and a little bit of advice, get here at 10 a.m. because it's only open from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and there is so much to see. We got here at 10 to 12, we've got about another hour left, but I wish we'd have come as soon as it started because it's just a feast of so many different things. We're about to head off and try and find the bookstore now, but it's definitely the kind of place you spend four hours or so. Also loads to eat. It's two euros entry per person, but it's completely worth it because the selection of stuff is probably just about the most interesting selection of stuff I've ever seen at any one of these antiques fairs anywhere in my life. We found it. This is what 150,000 books looks like. I'm hoping to find a copy of Chantran here. What's my chances? <laughs> Wow. This is oh, nice. wow. So you can get a drink. This is what they're talking about. You can get, get your vermouth from here, books all around you, and a band will start playing over here. So classy. So more books for sale here and then all of the drinks lined up here. Vermouth seems to be the drink that most people drink here. And you've got the band at the back. It's fantastic. Yo pongo un recrujir de almidón y tu serio y altanero Dicen que no se estila, no, no, ni mi medallón ni tu cesano Dicen que no se estila, no, no, ni mi medallón ni tu cesano You almost lose your bearings because you're walking around and then you see a flight of stairs or a little room in the corner and, you know, away from the madness I'm in this room all by myself, it's like someone's living room but you've just got everything to yourself here with vintage books lined up, an old model of a ship here. And these beautiful old sofas, I guess, to pick a book, maybe check that you like the look of it before you buy it. Isn't it? I've never been anywhere like this in my life. It's fascinating. Really a, a very unique experience to come here. I'd highly recommend it. You know, it's funny, every time we come to a vintage fair or somewhere like that and I see Levi's jeans, I always look out for what the fakes are because a few years ago, Monica and I tried reselling vintage clothes. Didn't work out. <laughs> but now I always look at the labels on the Levi's jeans because a lot of the time people take a label from an old pair of Levi's jeans mm. and just sew it on to a denim jacket and now I know exactly what to look for. I think I've got an eagle eye for that stuff. Most of those look to be real, but I can always... I can always point out one that has just the wrong label stitched on the wrong garment. <laughs> Is that a good skill to have? Yeah. Quite good. So I remember my dad used to have something like that, but about three times bigger. <laughs> and he used to film us when we were about five years old. The problem is now we've got about 30 VHSs and I no real way. Them. Yeah, but no real way to watch them. So he's got a whole trunk like that just the VHS's yeah. but I remember the batteries like that you clip them off like a, a holster of a gun or yeah. a clip of ammo yeah. we need this for the beard that's really nice I mean stuff like this if you're doing up your house there's so much good stuff Highly recommended. I think we were about 
you know, we were probably about four hours there actually in the end. It is such a fun way to spend a day. Highly, highly recommended that, or highly recommend that. They genuinely love their Bonnevilles here in Spain. They really do. T100, exactly my engine. I do like that with the spoke wheels and the modern one. So what you've got here is the 2016 onward model and the 2008 to 2015 model here. It's interesting comparing the differences. And then my disgusting filthy one in the corner there. Beautiful. I see so many of these though in Barcelona. They are all over the place. It's probably my favorite city in the world. We wanted to come here for a month just to see what it was like to live here as a city. Oh, it's exceeded my expectations. It's amazing. And there's one thing I'll take from here. Waking up in the morning, eight or nine in the morning, and whether it's in central Barcelona or if it's just on the outskirts, seeing, I wish I'd have filmed it, but I didn't once, just rows of men lined up in coffee shops. And this is just the norm. They have their newspaper, they have either a glass of beer, which is incredible, from eight o'clock, a glass of beer, sometimes coffee, but usually beer, cigarette, newspaper, just sit there, facing the sun like that, and they seem to sit there for about an hour and a half. It's something I've told Monica that I'm gonna start taking up, because <laughs> the idea of that peace and quiet starting every morning, fantastic, it's brilliant. So I'll take something away from this trip, 100%, apart from Barcelona. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming along. We've got the start of our trip back in two days' time. We've booked nothing, we're just going to drive back and see how far north we can get the first day and then we'll book the ferry for the second day. So I think we're a shock to the system getting back to England because it sounds like the weather's been horrific there, but still looking, looking forward to getting back. So thank you everyone for coming on. Thank you Barcelona for being so hospitable and we will see you all in the next one on our ride or our drive back home.